Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're gonna look at the if-else conditional expression in After Effects. This is part of the After Effects expression experience that I think a lot of people could stand to know and make use of, and at the very least, you'll learn a bit about the After Effects expression language. So, if you feel like expanding your After Effects expression horizons, then you should keep watching for the next 10 minutes, maybe? else uh, do something else. Maybe there's something else you could do. Watch another excellent video on this channel. That's a good thing to do. Or, uh, I don't know, go outside and enjoy your day. I have no idea. So what is a conditional if-else expression? Well, it's a way for us to have After Effects make a choice or have a different output based on a situation or input that might change. So for example, we have this dial, and if the dial is pointing in the red zone, that light comes on. We don't have a single keyframe in this composition to make that happen. The needle is moving with an expression that we won't talk about because that's for another video. But how does this sort of work? Well. We have an input that we can make use of, in this case, the rotation of the dial, and we have an output that we want to control, which in this case is the opacity of the layer that represents that light. So here's what we would specifically say to After Effects. In the opacity, we would write if, and then we would put these parentheses, and inside those, we would put the condition. So the if what, or the if this. That's where we would say what condition needs to be true in order for the thing to happen. And in our case, I'm going to just write or pick whip the rotation of the layer that we're interested in. And then uh, put down the greater than symbol, which looks like this. It's like a little shark eating the thing. And then the value, you know, so if this thing is greater than 135, so if that's true, then finally we would write what the output should be after the parentheses. And you can put that in braces if you want. It's good practice to do that. To keep yourself organized in case you start adding more complex and multiple if expressions later on. But we'll talk about that later. And finally, we would have to account for all the times that that condition isn't going to be happening. When is that not true? What if the rotation is not greater than 135? Well, then we would write else, and uh, I prefer to put that on another line, just to keep things clear, followed by what the output or value should be in every instance that isn't covered by that first thing. So in this case, if anything else is true, be zero. And basically that's it. That's how the thing does what it does. Every frame After Effects reads our excellent instructions, checks them, and does the things we say for it to do. So now that we know how this works, what can we actually do with it? So here's our first example. We're in After Effects, and what we've got is this circle here that's going around the little infinity sign, and sometimes it's over the junction in the middle, sometimes it's under the junction in the middle. And you've probably guessed this is a perfect use for an if-else expression because I've got two copies of this circle. And if one of them is on, then the other one should be off. So what we can do is we can have one of them, I've had this one layer here, top mover I've called it. And if we look down here at the expression, its opacity uh, is looking at the other layer's opacity. It's looking at it right here. This is that, this is that thing. And so we're saying if x, which we've defined as the opacity of the other layer, is equal to 100, that's what those two equals sign together mean. In After Effects expressions, you need to put equals equals to say equivalent to. Uh, so if x is equivalent to 100, your value should be 0. Otherwise, else, your value should be 100, right? So that means when one of them is on, the other is off with you so far. Now, the other thing, the bottom mover, I've set up to stare at a checkbox control. We've got this checkbox effect here, which I've renamed bottom or top, and it just has a checkbox on it. And what it's saying is, well, if that checkbox, if X, the checkbox value, is equal to, is it equivalent to 1? If it's equivalent to 1, then your value is 100, or else your value is 0. So uh, what we can look at then is these little checkboxes here, which use hold keyframes. So sometimes the checkbox is on, and then it's off. And that's controlling whether the layer is on or off. And this layer controls this layer. So this is a way that you can set up things like the checkbox controller to link two things together. And I just wanted to show you the, the equivalency 
uh, comparative, which is another one. You know, you've got greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, you know, equivalent to, you can have not equal to, you could have and. There's a, there's a lot of things. So let's look at example two. Example two is a more complex dial. It's a more uh, difficult thing. What I've got it set up to do is to change the color down here. So when we're in the dark, darker zone, it's dark. And when we're in the lighter zone, it's light. And when we're in neither zone, it's neither. So its expression looks a little bit different. Up at the top, I've got my variables and I've placed all of these expressions on the fill here, on, this, on the fill of the indicator. So that's just the fill of a shape layer, right? And the expressions that I have in here, I've got these variables. So we've got A1 is uh, equal to this color picker right here, this color box. You can choose a bunch of colors. So A1 is this color. A2 is that color. And we're just pick whipping up there. R is equal to the rotation of the dial, right? So that's going to be my input. I want to know what the rotation of the dial is. So I've got that set up as a variable as well. And what I'm saying here, this is a little bit of a longer thing. So if, and you know, inside the parentheses, if this statement I'm making is true, then show the first color. Else, if R is greater than 45, show the second color. And else, else anything that's not covered by those things, just be your normal value. And the normal value of chosen the same color as the background. So what is, this is really the part right here, this R greater than zero and and R less than 45. That's really the, the thing that's new. And what I'm doing is I've created two, uh, two sort of statements here. This is rotation greater than zero and, so hitting and twice there, and and also. So if this is true, and this is true, then everything in the brackets here is going to be considered true, right? So this and this, true. So if it is in between these two values, then it'll display A1. And that's how you can set up a range if you want. So larger than and smaller than, perfect. And this one, this other one, picks up where the other one leaves off. So R is greater than or equal to 45 and R less than 45. So you notice we still have to account for the number 45 somewhere in there. If you had one that just said R is greater than 45 and R is less than 45, you'd be missing out on the actual number 45 when it's exactly 45. So make sure you're accounting for those and, you know, else value. So I think that uh, kind of explains itself. So yeah, the needle is waggling back and forth and sometimes it's here, sometimes it's there and it changes the color. The third example, this is a little bit more uh, wacky in here. So, so here we have an even longer string. There's an even longer logical thing that we want to have in there. And what I was thinking was if this dial here, this white circle here is pointing in this range, which we can define with rotation. And if this circle is in this range, which we can define by rotation, you know, if this range and this range is true, and notice the brackets, right? The brackets are containing things, containing like two sides that we're comparing to each other. So this and this, so if that resolves to be true, and this and this, if that resolves to be true, then we're saying if all of this stuff is true, then make your value 100. If that is not true, if none of that is true, then zero. You can have fairly complex and fairly nested logical statements uh, in your conditional, and really how complex you get is gonna be determined by what specifically you need to do. And that is it. Congratulations, you now know about the if else expression. I hope it really helps you out. If you have had trouble with this tutorial, well, let me know in the comments and I can try to help you through it. Expressions are difficult. It's learning a new language. It's difficult for everybody. So let me know where you're stuck and I'll try to help you out. If you'd like to get your hands on the files we used as examples, you can check those out. Head on over to evanabrams.com. Those are available. And uh, you know, if you wanna kick in a few bucks, keep the channel going, that would be much appreciated. And if this is something you enjoy, subscribe, subscribe, turn on notifications and uh, you will find out when new stuff goes on around here we have live streams that happen once a month try to get up new tutorials when we can they take a bit of time to make but if you're not subscribed you won't see them so 
that's going to be rough. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you have questions about After Effects in general, hit me up on Twitter at EC Abrams on there. Get involved on the Facebook page. All that stuff is in the description. Thanks again for watching. And if you subscribe, I'll see you around the internet.